Hello, fairy finders and fairy seekers. Welcome to Fairy Quest and to part three of Attracting Fairies. As promised, this section is all about host and hostess responsibilities. And let me cover this first. If you don't wish to do any kind of hostess or host responsibilities, such as food and towels and you know providing the things that you might normally find in say a human motel then you are not obligated to do so you can put a sign up as mentioned before and just put on that sign also that magic will be required and I think the fairies will get to know that if that's on the sign that means that they will be providing for themselves as they would any other time. The reason for having host and hostess responsibilities for some of these locations such as the spa or vacation spot and the traveler's accommodation is because everybody likes to get pampered from time to time, right? And I would imagine fairies enjoy being pampered too. So why not offer them an experience where they can relax their magic for a little while unless they want to use it relax their magic for a little while and that way they have the full experience of what it's like to have a bit of pampering and to have others provide for them for a change they do a lot for us with nature and if you aren't really familiar or really versed in what nature spirits fairies do there is a series of videos that basically were at the very start of my channel and they involved a nature spirit by the name of Hasla and I created cartoons with Hasla that gave information about what she did as a nature spirit and they were very very informative i did not write the scripts i doused the scripts from her and then i created the cartoon from the the information she gave so i will link to what i feel is one of the most appropriate ones for this particular video in the description box below if you're interested in seeing that so moving on now talking about the amenities what we are covering here is things like food most of the time from what I understand is that fairies don't actually eat the food they inhale like the essence of the food or the energy from the food so you may never see bites out of the food you may never notice any food missing whatsoever perhaps a little shriveled <laughs> maybe that would be a sign um, but you you're not going to see a whole lot of indication that you know the food has been eaten as with any location you know if they're surviving in a vacation spot or a spa with you and they're staying for a week it is a good idea to have you know three meals a day a couple snacks a day and making sure that they're always provided for keeping in mind that a small fairy is you know you could probably provide a berry a single blueberry that would last them as a snack for two two snacks in a day and you could give them such things as cheese little a piece of small piece of cheese you could give them a small piece of bread you could give them a piece of tomato anything that is natural without chemicals if you can go organic that would be best of all but providing that then they don't have to use their magic to provide food for themselves as they're so accustomed to doing that on a regular basis but again it's all energetic next obviously is water now our tap water is full of a lot of chemicals supposedly for our good we won't go there <laughs> but you need to have 
as fresh a water as you can possibly get for these fairies to use. And bottled water is, if it's spring, spring fed bottled water, then that is definitely the next best option. Or filtered water, if that is what you have flowing from your kitchen sink, say. But bottled water is probably the best solution in this day and age anyway. And you could set it up just as kind of like they used to do with the, the milk in the old days where the guy would come on the truck and he would deliver however many bottles of milk that particular family needed and he'd put them on the front porch. <laughs> so you could do that with small bottles, but you also need to make sure that you are offering something that they can wash in because little bottles of water like that are only going to last for so long you want to make sure that they have something to say wash dishes should they decide to do it by hand or to wash their hair or to bathe in or just to wash their feet if their feet happen to get muddy and they don't want to get it in on the sheets that you've provided so having some kind of washing water so that might take a little larger container making sure that there is not a difficult to open lid on that container doesn't need to be huge but it needs to be bigger than a bottle a little little miniature bottle for the purpose of being able to wash clothing as well and those kinds of things so and again magic will come into play here and you can always put on the sign uh, a bit of magic required <laughs> if you don't want to have to worry about giving them wash water like that. If you have provided uh, a toilet in your whatever you create, some people are able to make toilets that actually flush in miniature and you can find those on YouTube. If you wish to create that, you just need to make sure that you are cleaning that toilet daily. Not sure exactly how fairies do their business, but you know, you never know if, if it's available and maybe they have toilets of their own. I don't know. Anyway, if you also offer a swimming pool, that is something that needs to be changed on a daily basis too, because you cannot use chlorine of any kind, which again, there's chlorine in our tap water. So you definitely don't want to fill up a pool with chlorinated or fluoridated water from our tap so that would have to be bottled water and of course water that sits gets stagnant because there's no movement now you might be thinking well what about a fountain well a fountain is awfully nice for aesthetics and for sound however it isn't fresh water it is constantly recycled so it's not fresh water and that's probably not the best thing to ask the fairies to drink out of or to wash in. Whether or not you are providing the swimming pool or bathroom facilities or whatever, or if you're you know, saying that some magic is required, it's probably a good idea to always have a lot of towels and washcloths because you never know if there you know, happens to be a spill. And yes, they could probably snap their fingers and the spill is gone. Not exactly sure how all the magic works and what they are fully capable of. However, it is nice to have those things if they would like to say lay out in the sun and sunbathe, they have a towel to lay on, that kind of thing. Or if they want to have a picnic with the food that you've provided or if you haven't provided food, they can still have a picnic <laughs> on the towel outside with magical food that they have created. So obviously, unless you are one of those very fortunate people who are capable of seeing fairies because they trust you enough to allow you to see them, you may not know that the food has been eaten or the towels have been used or the water has been used other than it might look at, like evaporation but at first the fairies are always going to make sure that you are not aware that they are around and if you have children young children you may have to depend on their eyes or just 
take it by chance. Whatever way you are able to interact with them, one of the main things is to make sure that is that the vacation spa is always clean and always stocked with whatever you have decided that you would like to do with your ferry location. You should also always have spare bedding for the rooms and if you're providing shampoo and soaps and lotions and things like that that you've made yourself always natural, all natural, then those should be replaced after each ferry has gone on their way. And again, that's going to be hard to tell. So you're going to have to go with your intuition a bit with that. So the vacation spa and the overnight traveler's accommodation, they're very, very similar. You're going to want very similar things for them. You might not require as many food items because if they're just there overnight, you could probably provide a small amount of food just for a snack for when they check in and maybe something for morning. And again, the little bottles of water are very nice if you want to allow them to wash up a little bit. One of those old washers and pitchers that they had in the olden days with a washcloth by and a towel, that might work or you know, you can provide them with something that they could use as like a bathtub, I guess. If you want to add an extra portion of something onto their location, whatever you're building, so that they do have an actual bathroom that they can freshen up in. No matter which one of these you do, if this is what you're choosing, then you're going to want to clean at least once a week the entire sanctuary and just like with a motel or some place that we humans would go for vacation or spa you want to make sure everything is clean everything is dusted everything is vacuumed everything is refreshed and new for the next fairy who comes in now let's talk about the permanent homes you don't have as much responsibility in a permanent home as you would for the traveler's accommodation or the vacation spa, okay? Because in a permanent home, that's a private kind of residence in a way. So unless you've hired a housekeeper that comes in, someone you trust on a regular basis, or a cook, you know, you're going to do pretty much all of it yourself. And that is probably what the fairy or fairies would expect to do even in your home even an indoor permanent home so you don't have as many responsibilities I would still provide water just because if they're indoors as these that we've been talking about for the last three videos are then you will probably want to make sure that they have easy access to water so you could do that and as mentioned before I'm sure they wouldn't mind every once in a while having a nice little neat package on their porch with like cakes or a little container of honey or something like that that's just kind of like a special treat and something to say hey I know you're here and I appreciate you being here they would love that if you are providing washcloths and towels you probably won't have to worry about doing the washing on these the fairy that lives in the permanent residence will do that themselves you just need to provide the spring water for them if you have other things such as plants outside or you know any anything that might need some kind of maintenance outside the building that you create then you will have to do say watering of plants as often as needed and it's probably a good good idea to make sure that that area is always cleaned up so in other words if there's plants that you've added and those plants are dropping some dead leaves clean up the dead leaves make make it always look very very nice if you happen to see you know say from something that you've created on the house say a shutter kind of comes loose fix it very quickly with whatever kind of glue you know that is non-toxic fix it 
do whatever it takes to keep this permanent home very, very nice for the fairy or fairies who have chosen to live there. And they will probably live there for a very long time. So you won't have to clean the inside of the permanent home because most of the time those fairies or fairy that live in the permanent home probably will just very much enjoy having the, the privacy. So they will be doing their own cleaning. So obviously between the spa, vacation spa, and the traveler's overnight accommodation, there's a lot more responsibility for those two than there is for a permanent home. So depending on how much time you have on your hands might depend on how much effort, how much responsibility you want to give yourself. Now you also have to keep in mind that if this is something you choose to get into, two things must happen if you happen to go away on a vacation of your own or have to leave home for you know a couple of days or something. Someone has to be there to fill in the gap. Someone that you can trust, somebody who's willing to put into things as much as you have. Otherwise you'll have to give a small note say with the water in the morning to say over the next few days magic will be required because I must go out of town for this length of time and give them the dates so they know that what you normally provide will not be provided for them. That's always a really good practice and it's just courtesy. They will appreciate that also. Now you may be wondering through all this, what is the point? What do fairies and doing this kind of thing for fairies, what, what's the point? Well, we covered some of that in video one, but fairies are very lucky. And when they are well cared for and when they are respected, they are oftentimes very much willing to share that luck with you, whatever that luck entails. And as we talked about with the fairy that might come to you when you need help, who helps you energetically, that fairy has more energy and more ability to use magic for your good if the magic is not fully required from that fairy. Because like anything else, I mean, if you use your arms a lot, your arms get tired. If you have to talk a great deal, then your, your voice gets tired and you could get laryngitis. Well, fairies are the same. They have magic, but again, it is possible to kind of run out of magic or need to rest the magic. So even a fairy that is there to help you energetically, if you are giving that fairy a little helping hand so that they don't have to use their magic all the time, then they can give back to you in energetic ways, both in luck and health and that kind of thing. So keep that in mind, but don't just do it for that purpose. It's always going to be a balance of give and take. So I guess you can look at it as, you know, what you put into it is what you get back. And I think it's a fun project for all involved. So in the next video, we will be talking about the outdoor locations, the outdoor sanctuaries for these fairies and a little more in depth on things that you need to know that might be different from the indoor sanctuaries. So I do hope you're enjoying this small series and until the next video, take care.